Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday morning, and I woke up to the news that Donald Trump may be arrested on Tuesday. And I was talking to my child about end-time prophecy, how the United States plays out, um, or is not even mentioned in the Bible. And so, um, you know, I'm watching all these new news headlines on Trump being indicted maybe on Tuesday and how he is going to surrender. Um, this is all political. This is to keep him from running for president in 2024. Um, even if he didn't get arrested, even if he became president again, this country's done for. Um, we have been given over to Satan for control. He is the power on earth and he has full dominion. Um, and, uh, God has allowed us, um, Christians to be able to, uh, say our peace, stand up for what's right. And, um, the Patriots to be able to stand up for this country. However, he is not going to control us and we have free choice. And, um, just like the broken marriages, um, and the division of families, broken families right now, and, um, brother against brother fighting, um, friendships that are broken because of, um, government decisions in the past couple years, <laughs> um, or because of, um, difference of opinions, um, I really believe the rapture is about ready to take place. I have been saying this. Um, I have been seeing the signs in the heavens, in the sky. I have um, just an inner feeling something big is about ready to happen. I also heard yesterday that the banks are all going to be going digital. And banks are collapsing. Um, and... Everything's supposed to be turned over digital uh, here in the United States of America. I think all over the world, actually, uh, by July. So that gives us three more months. <laughs> um, doesn't mean the Mark of the Beast is going to start in July. I'm just saying that um, because of the past pandemic, the decisions that are being made, I really see a separation of the sheeps and the goats. I have said previously in videos before, um, something big is about ready to happen. And I think it's the rapture. I really firmly believe. Um, you know, the disciples said, hey, how do we know, Jesus, that you're coming? And he listed all out. There'll be famine. How else are we gonna have famine in the United States of America, except for we cannot do trade anymore. Um, we have open borders to way too many people coming in. Um, uh, they are taking over our crops, our farmlands, um, which is what China is doing right now here in the United States. They are taking over a lot of our farmlands and, um, Raising the price of food because of um, inflation and um, the economy. We do not have um, money. It's going to be a cashless society. Everything's going digital. It's just a number. Um, and uh, it's a very good way to control people, isn't it? We learned during the pandemic that... Um, they do not have to stock shelves if they don't want to on certain items. Um, we have learned that they can um, hijack the uh, prices of food and um, control the masses of um, people's thoughts and um, their decisions because of not being able to even feed their children formula. Um, 
woe to those who are pregnant during that time. That's what the Bible says. Um, I want to tell you guys real quick about a dream I had um, and add it to this video that I just made before posting. And um, I totally forgot that I had this dream last night, um, but it was about me giving uh, birth. Again, since my divorce a year ago, I have had several dreams of me being pregnant um, and delivering a baby. And I don't understand the meaning of my dreams, but it's always, I feel the baby's head coming out. Um, I can touch it. Um, I had a hysterectomy in 2017, so it was very odd for me to have dreams of me having a baby. Uh, I looked up this morning on YouTube, what could that possibly mean? Um, having dreams of having babies after hysterectomies. And um, a video showed up where the woman was saying, well, I think a dream of having a baby means, um, number one, your mother, and you have that motherly instinct, but also that you um, have changes coming, new beginnings happening in your life. And it really just kind of thought um, an idea that I've had that's been with me for months now um, of some new beginnings that are going to start taking place in my life. Um, new changes on how I look because I'm starting to take care of myself a lot better than I did when I was married. Um, I'm losing weight. I'm going on diet. I um, am exercising more. I'm feeling good uh, physically more. Um, I'm getting my home in order. I'm changing things up. I'm stocking up for when this rapture does happen um, for those who are left behind that I love. Um, I have actually wrote um, down uh, some scriptures and stuff when I was married to leave in my food storage um, with a letter. Uh, and I have thought yesterday about redoing that uh, letter and fitting for the people who I feel in my life that very well could be left behind. And I want to leave special messages for those people. Um, I'm just in prep mode for some reason. I feel like I need to just prep, 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 prep for the future. Um, that's all I can do is prep. Um, I'm buying water and toilet paper and stocking up on food. And um, I just feel like I'm in a prepping mood. Um, for spring. It's not just clean mood. I am in a prepping mood. And so um, these type of things are something that I just feel like is the Holy Spirit in me that is um, trying to tell me there's going to be a new birth, a new beginning of new changes, and you need to prepare for what's coming. And so I don't know what those changes are. Um, I have no clue. But I do know something big is happening. And so as I was making this video, I kept thinking, oh, I had that dream last night about giving birth. Um, and it was about contractions, just having pain in my stomach and, and feeling like, oh, the pain is coming more and more closer together, closer together. And then I reach down and I'm giving birth and it's on the floor. It's never, I may never make it to the hospital. It's on the floor on my hands and knees, which is kind of funny that I say that now. Um, you know, praying, oh dear God, I'm, I'm going to have this baby and I'm giving birth and I reach down and I touch its head and it's coming out and, um, it's so symbolic, I think, to what's going on in my life. I think it's so symbolic of the contractions that, um, the world is seeing that is happening, uh, so fast. And so I thought oh, I, I would share this dream with you and add it to this video as I'm editing so I wanted to make sure I added it. And um, what do you guys think? What do you think? You think it's because of the birth pains and um, the baby's coming. Jesus. Jesus is coming. Okay. It is all laid out in Revelation. If you are wanting to know what's going on in this world right now. Um... Or if you are left behind, I want to encourage you to um, 
seek anything that could be out there in public um, to get into God's word. I am praying that these watchmen who are saying rapture's coming, rapture's coming, watch women who are saying rapture's coming, rapture's coming. Even if their videos are titled the rapture is getting ready to happen or a Christian single mom. Um, I am praying that our videos are found. Um, that we are sounding the alarm. When thousands of people are just gone, disappearing, it was not aliens that came and got us. It was Jesus Christ. Um, we are seeking him. We are waiting for him to come and get us. We are anxiously waiting. We're excited about things that are happening around the world. Um, things of collapse, wars, rumors of wars, just as the Bible says in Revelation, is going to happen. Um, Matthew 24, read that. It will tell you what is to come. And um, then read Revelation. Because Revelation is talking about what is going to be happening when um, the tribulation begins. Um, there is going to be a mark that you are going to be forced to take. Um, it will be your decision to take. But um, if you want to live, you will be forced to take a mark on your forehead or your back of your right hand. Do not take that mark. You will have to be beheaded. Um, but if you take that mark, you will be Satan's. Um, and you will not be going to heaven. Um, and you will know when you take that mark that it is um, a decision of life or death to take that mark. It's not going to be forced upon you to um, make that decision. You have free will to make that decision. But um, I'm just warning you that that is the consequences you will have. And you will know that when you make that decision. Um, I don't want anybody that I love to be left behind. Now is the time to get your homes in order, stock up on food, toilet paper, all the necessity things that you need. Get those solar panels if you have them. Get those um, bottles of water. I wish I would have done a better job of leaving some things behind for those um, that are left. Family members that I love. Um, even my ex-husbands that I love. Um, my friends that I love, that are left behind. I want to encourage you if the rapture has not happened yet please please accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior before it's too late doesn't mean you're going to be perfect doesn't mean you're not going to sin but as long as we have breath and we are here I'm encouraging everyone to seek Jesus he's our only hope and he's our only Savior he's the only one who can forgive us of our sins and um I feel like God has told me in my divorce that I need to stand up for my faith, no matter the cost. I need to fight for what is right, no matter the cost. I need to set that example of what a Christian should do. I need to be in God's word and I need to make sure that I am following and obeying his commandments. That is including loving my spouse, even though he's filed for divorce. It means um, still following 
um, scripture on what I'm teaching my children, even if it's in disagreement of my ex-spouse. Um, I need to continue to be and do what I was doing during my marriage and um, not change, I believe, at all. I believe that divorce is wrong. I believe that um, there are many people right now who are falling away. Um, and I believe that you are saved, once saved, always saved. I believed even though I was five years old and I was saved at five years old, I believe I am a Christian. I have asked Jesus into my heart multiple times just to make sure. <laughs> um, and I believe that even though I sin on a daily basis, um, I believe that I am a Christian. And I believe I am a Christian because I have no other desire to live in this world. I have a desire to want to know more about Christ, follow Christ more. I want to read his word more. I want to worship him more. I want to um, do what is right according to his will and according to um, the Bible. And um, it does say, do not worry about these things that are coming up on the earth. For um, you have no need to worry as a Christian. And uh, the thought of being in heaven with Jesus is just so exciting to me. He can come back any day, any second, I am ready. Um, I hope I can get this video out. I hope I can get it posted. I hope it will help someone out there. Um, I want to add the very end of this, the ABCs of salvation. All you have to do is accept Christ. Um, if the rapture would happen this week um, or a weekend, I want to be able to have this video out. I just feel inclined immediately to make this video as soon as I woke up to the news that Trump is getting arrested. Um, if they can arrest a president of the United States of America for any reason, the United States is over. We have no republic anymore. Um, it's one thing to say that they took an election. It's another thing to um, make up any reason at all to arrest someone fighting for their freedom, for the right to have a say, have a voice. Um, there are many Christians right now, including myself, being persecuted for their faith. And uh, a true Christian would fight to the very end. Trump talks a lot about God. Um, and I want to say God is using him. Now, God could come back and take all of us, including Trump. Um, and what I think the other side needs to understand is we are all sinners. Whether Trump did what they're saying or not, we are all sinners. I mean, look at the other side, what they're doing, um, or have done in the past. Who's going to throw the first stone first, right? Just like Jesus said in the parable. If you have no sin, then you cast the first stone. Not saying that Trump is perfect, because he's far from it. But it's political. It's political. They're taking down his voice. They're taking down pastor's voices. Um, Jack Hibbs just got um, censored again and taken down for his free rapture in time political stance 
for Trump. Um, and for doing what's right. Trump says, I'm going to turn myself in on Tuesday. If they press these charges, I'm going to turn myself in. I'm letting the world know. I'm going to follow the rules. That's the thing with Christians. We are rule followers. It doesn't matter what accusations come against us. We are rule followers. We will follow the rules. And the other side knows that. And they're going to use that for the advantage of um, taking down the Christians. And uh, I don't know how they sleep at night, knowing that that's what they're doing. Uh, the other side really believes that they're right <laughs> and um, that they have the control. But I'm telling you, God is going to intervene. He's going to come and get us. He's not going to allow United States of America to fall without coming and getting his Christian people out of here. Um, and he's not going to allow other countries to fall. And if the United States isn't there as a un united front to help other countries like Israel, why not God come get us? He's going to come and get us because we don't have our voices anymore. The light cannot be shined anymore. It's being rejected. And uh, that's the whole point of the rapture is um, to protect those who have accepted Christ. So if the time is not yet, these things must come to pass. The famine, the earthquakes, the pestilence. Pestilence is pandemics. <laughs> they must happen. They must come to pass. Everybody's like, what's going on? Why is this happening? It must come to pass. You know, financial breakdown of the United States of America. It must come to pass for um, the new world order. I mean, even President Biden has said, new world order's coming. I believe him. I believe him. It's coming. Um, freedoms are being lost. Freedom of religion is being taken away. And this is how they're going to do it. They have a plan. They have been open about their plan not a secret and they will do whatever necessary but God is in control I could tell you by the elections that have happened in the past God is in control the one before Trump become president the elections when Trump became president the elections when Biden became president. So many things have fallen right into place because of those last three presidents that we've had. Um, setting the stage for the rapture of the church. Um, setting the stage not only in the United States of America, but around the world. Those presidents have set in motion the world events to take place in order for the rapture of the church to take place. It's amazing how God used these people that some of them I never heard of. <laughs> One of the presidents that became president of the United States of America Nobody knows where he came from. Nobody has ever heard of him. And yet he became president of the United States of America. Never been heard of things have been happening. It's craziness. It's madness. It's like a, um, what well, one analogy, Mad Max movie. I just heard. It is. It's Mad Max. It's craziness. But you as a Christian, you're not afraid. You're excited. This is great news that Trump's going to get arrested maybe on Tuesday. It's great news. Because that means we're done. There is no voice anymore. No buddy standing up for what's right. They're going to be arrested if you stand up for what's right. That's what this is telling me. If you stand up for what's right, you're going to have... Your loved ones taken away, you're going to have 
um, these concentration camps. They're ready. They're ready to go. During the pandemic, they were setting the stage and now they're ready to go. The pandemic didn't work, but it set the stage. It's all ready to go. The show is about to begin. And um, get your popcorn, guys, because it's time. It's time. And uh, I think most of the Christians that I watch, um, most of the pastors that I listen to, including the pastor at my local church, um, most of my friends who are other believers in Christ, they are excited. We have all been waiting and watching since 2015. And um, God has put each of us in a place where we can now say, Hey, when you see these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption draw near. 2015, begin seeing the signs. I've been saying it in my marriage to my husband for years. And he kept saying, you kept saying this for years. Guess what? It's going to happen. Because I know it's going to happen. I see these things begin to happening. Not only have they begun to happening, they're converging. It's all at once. And all the Christians are saying, Jesus is coming back. So get excited. And you better not be sinning. When Jesus comes back, you better not be falling away. You better have your life right with God. That means get your homes in order. You know, keep what you can keep. There's going to be a day soon where we're not going to be able to go to the grocery store and have um, groceries without taking a mark. I'm telling you guys, Jesus is coming back. So I wanted to make this video. I hope it encourages you. I hope it doesn't ever be taken down off of YouTube. I love you guys. Live out your daily lives as you always have. But make sure you're right with God. Because any second now, he's coming to get us. We're going to hear that trumpet sound. You know, I have felt kind of depressed the last couple years because I have been persecuted. I have been accused of things that I have not done. I have um, been rejected for my love in Christ, my love for my husband, being faithful, following um, a marriage that I believed was a Christian home, Christian marriage, fighting for what's right. I've been rejected. I've been accused. And I feel like I could be arrested. And it's okay. I will turn myself in. Because I want to do what's right. Um, during the last couple years of the pandemic, choices were having to be made. Do I work? Do I not work? Do I take this thing that's being forced? Do I not take it? You know what? I'm so happy I stood for what's right. I refuse to take it. Um, makes me proud to be a Christian. Aren't you proud to be a Christian? To have faith is everything. Without Christ, I'm nothing. Without Christ, I'm not a good mom. Without Christ, I'm not a good wife. Without Christ, I'm not... A good person, a good citizen. With Christ, I'm everything. I am a good citizen. I do what's right. I'm a rule follower. I'm a good wife because I want that Christian marriage in my home. I'm a good mother because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. doesn't matter if I have an apartment. I'm still serving the Lord. <sighs> that verse that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. 
he's the only reason why I'm getting through this life. If Trump gets arrested and if he knows Jesus Christ as his personal savior, for real, he'll be okay sitting in jail. He'll be okay. He will follow the rules. He will turn himself in if he is going to fight for what's right, even politically. He will do whatever he has to do. Just like Paul in jail. We will sit in jail as Christians until we um, have to choose to be beheaded. They say, oh, well, we're going to behead you. Okay. I'm a Christian still. Take it off. Doesn't matter. That's what faith is. Faith is believing in something and taking it to your grave. I think of all of those people who have been martyred for their faith. Those disciples. How did they die? And they didn't turn their back on Jesus, besides Judas. All the way to the death. That's what we are to fight for as Christians. The reward for that, we don't deserve. To be in heaven with Jesus, none of us are good enough to be with the one who created us. And it's his grace and his love for us that he gives us this free choice. And so, how do you do that? You repent of your sins. You ask God for forgiveness. You say, oh, dear God, I have messed up. I cannot do this on my own. I need you to help. Help me. And forgive me, please, dear God. You know, even going through a divorce, I had to ask for forgiveness of what I've done because I cannot allow my husband just to walk away from our marriage without even asking him for forgiveness for what I've done wrong. You know, I had to write it all down. This is what I feel like I've done wrong in our marriage. And I said, please forgive me. And he says, I, I do. Then he asked me to forgive him. And I said, for what? Well, I don't got time. I don't got time to write it down. I don't got time to be real with you, to tell you how much I did wrong because he didn't do anything wrong, he says. How can you be a Christian if you didn't do anything wrong? God says, confess your sins. Those who are faithful and just to um, ask righteousness of God's grace to forgive us of our sins, those are the ones who will be saved. So God says, ask for forgiveness, confess of those sins, and give your life over to me. Again, you surrender all. Not just part of your life, but little, but everything in your life. You give over to Christ. So you are to surrender everything over to Christ. And you are to give him your life. And let him be in control. This news, this breaking news on Trump is so exciting to me. It shows where we are. And a lot of people are saying the rapture is getting ready to happen. Look up. Your redemption draws near. Accept him before it's too late. Love you guys. Bye.